So earlier we spoke about Lagrange points and we said that five Lagrange points exist. Now we also said that if we take a satellite and place a satellite onto one of these Lagrange points, the satellite will orbit the sun with the same exact period as the Earth. So let's suppose we want to calculate uh, one of these Lagrange points. So we want to calculate the L1 Lagrange point which lies on an orbit between the Earth and the Sun on an axis connecting the Sun and the Earth. So we want to calculate the distance between our satellite found on the L1 Lagrange point and the Earth. So let's suppose this distance is given by the capital letter L. So we have the Sun, the satellite, the Earth, all lying on the same axis and we want to calculate the distance between the satellite and the Earth given with the variable n, our unknown L. So, uh, let's suppose we know the mass of the Earth, we know the mass of the Sun, and we also know the radius of the Earth's orbit is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So the radius here is given by this value. So before we begin our calculation, uh, let's recall the formula of velocity of our object going around an orbit uh, with respect to the r, our radius and the period t. So the velocity is equal to the circumference 2 pi r divided by t. We're going to need to use this a few times in our calculation. So let's begin with step one. Let's find all the forces acting on the earth due to our objects. So we have two objects, the satellite and the sun. Because the satellite has a much smaller mass than the, uh, than the sun, that means we can neglect the force on the earth due to the satellite. So we assume only one force is acting on the earth, and that's the gravitational force of the sun acting on the earth. So, we use Newton's second law of motion. Sum of all the forces acting on the Earth is equal to mass of the Earth multiplied by radial acceleration of the Earth is equal to. So, we essentially, we essentially uh, rewrite the left side using our law of universal gravitation of the Sun on the Earth. So, we have the gravitational constant G multiplied by mass of the Earth multiplied by mass of the Sun divided by the radius from the Earth to the Sun, given by the following variable, squared. Now, we know what this value is. This is this value here. But for now, we're going to leave it as the following variable. So this equals to the mass of the Earth multiplied by the velocity of the Earth squared divided by the radius of the Earth's orbit, because radial acceleration is equal to V squared divided by R. Now, we can take this formula and substitute it into the velocity here and we get the following result. Notice the masses of the earth appear on both sides. So we, uh, so we cross them out and we get the following result. So this, the left side becomes this, the right side becomes this. And finally notice we have one radius on the bottom and two radii on the top. So we cross one out and we get the following result. So we get the left side is our gravitational constant g multiplied mass of the sun divided by the radius of the Earth's orbit squared equals 4 pi squared times radius of the Earth's orbit divided by the period of the Earth squared. Now this will come in handy at the end and that's why I put a star here. So let's go to step two. Now we want to calculate all the forces acting on the satellite. So there are two forces acting on a satellite, that's the force created by the Earth on the satellite and the force created uh, by the Sun on the satellite. So because our object moves in the following direction, its acceleration points this way, so we choose direction going in the negative direction along the x-axis to be positive. So that means the force created by the Sun is positive, the force created by the Earth is negative. So let's use second law of motion. The sum of all the forces acting on the satellite is equal to the mass of the satellite uh, simply given by m multiplied by its radial acceleration. So now we write our forces. This is our force due to the sun. This is our force due to the earth. 
notice the radius of the satellite's orbit is given by taking our radius of the Earth and multiplying by or subtracting this value L. And we get this value here. That's exactly what we do here. So the radius of the Earth's orbit around the Sun minus L, this distance, gives us the radius of the satellite's orbit around the Sun minus this value. Notice that if the Sun disappears, what is the radius of the satellite's orbit around the Sun? Well, it's simply L. And that's why we place L squared at the bottom here. Now, this equals to mass times our acceleration, which is V squared of the satellite, divided by the radius of the satellite's orbit around the Sun, which is identical to this value here. And now, let's take this term and plug it into the velocity here in the same way that we did it here in the first part. And this is exactly what we get. Now notice, the masses of our satellite cancel because they appear on every single term. So we get the following result. So now we need to do a little bit of mathematics. So we need to divide this term top and bottom by the radius of the Earth's orbit squared and we divide this term on the right side top and bottom by the radius of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. So we do this to simplify things at the end as we'll see in just a moment. So we get the following result. So this term becomes this here with a negative 2 on top. So this term we did nothing to, so it stays this way. This term we did do something to it, so it becomes this. So now, once again, we have to use a little bit of mathematics. We have to utilize the binomial expansion theorem. So the binomial expansion theorem says the following. If we have two numbers, x and y, and we raise them to a power n, which is essentially uh, a real number, uh, we can express them as a sum of different terms. And in fact, if we choose x to be 1, so if x becomes 1, and we choose y to be a very small number, we can approximate this value to the following value. So this is approximately very close to, or approximately equal to, 1 plus ny, where y is this very small number, and n is the power. So, let's make this assumption. Let's suppose y is very, very close to zero. So let's choose a y. Let's suppose y is this distance L, the distance from the Earth to the satellite to the L1 Lagrange point, divided by the entire distance or radius of the Earth's orbit. So if we take L and divide it by the radius of the Earth's orbit, we'll see that this is a very, very small number and it's very close to zero. So that means if we set Y to be this very, very small number, we can approximate this to the following value. And this is useful because we want to simplify this term. This term, 1 minus L over the radius of the Earth's orbit to the negative 2 power is a very messy number. We don't want that number. We want to simplify it. And that's why we use this simple uh, binomial appro uh, approximation. So, let's utilize it. So we rewrite this term, uh, GMS divided by the radius of the Earth's orbit squared. So this, this becomes this, so the negative 2 here, we have a negative here, so negative, negative, that becomes positive. We have an n here, so this becomes 2. The y becomes L divided by RES, because that's what we have here, and we get the following result. Now this is minus this term which stays the same, and this is equal to this term which also stays exactly the same. So now what we basically have to do is the following. Uh, we take this term and we go back to our first step where I said that we're, need to go, we're going to need to use this. And we take this term because notice we have 4 pi squared res divided by t squared, which is exactly what we have here. So we can represent this term in the following way, because the period of the Earth and the period of the satellite are exactly the same, they're identical. 
And so we get the following result. And now we simply distribute these terms on both sides and then we subtract and bring everything on one side and we get the following result. So we have 3g, our gravitational constant, multiplied by mass of the sun, multiplied by L, the distance we're looking for, divided by our radius of the Earth's orbit cubed equals g times mass of the Earth divided by L squared. So we bring L to one side, everything else to the other side. Notice the g's cancel, and we're left with the following value. So this L, if we plug in our, all our values, the L will give us the distance from the, uh, from the Earth to the satellite. So it will give us the distance from the Earth to Lagrange point L1. So we plug in our values and we find that the distance from the Earth to the uh, Lagrange point L1 is 1.5 times 10 to the 9 meters which is in fact a very small number compared to the radius of the Earth's orbit. So this assumption was in fact correct because Y is in fact very close to zero.